Rise and shine, everyone. Six o'clock here on your Wednesday. Thank you for starting your day with us here on Sunrise. Jason and Alicia here with you. Yeah, waking up. It feels tropical. It does. Out there. Very summer like uh, <laughs> guy, and it's going to stick around for a while. It sure is, too. Wait till you get into the afternoon today. Yesterday we hit 90. Today I'm going with a high of 92 degrees, and then we'll keep upper 80s and 90s throughout the remainder uh, of the week with afternoon shower and storm chances. And that's really giving us that shot, too, uh, at finding those afternoon shower and storm chances just due to that daytime heating. You got 66 right now. Dew point temps in the upper 50s. Your morning drive will be quiet. No need to worry about any rain or anything like that, but temperatures are already above the 80 degree mark by the lunch hour in late morning. And then you'll see temperatures warm up there to the upper 80s and low 90s for the afternoon drive. And this is when we'll start to see some showers and storms develop and kind of pop up and track eastward. So I'll time that out with microcast later. You still have some pop up showers here uh, well off to the south uh, right along the I-90 corridor. The rest of us pretty much quiet. Here's your three day forecast PM storm chance today, tomorrow, Friday looks like our stormiest day uh, with more widespread rain and temperatures in the upper 80s. Traffic moving along nicely this morning. No crashes to report at the moment. If you want to take a look right now all across the metro, we're seeing lots of green out there. I want to specifically this morning focus on 494. So this is in Bloomington at France. Uh, this is where the Adina to Richfield project is officially underway. So you can see right now lanes are open in both directions, but do be aware you want to watch for some lane closures in both directions. This will be every night from 7 p.m. to 6 in the morning. This will be now through June 30th as this is work going on for bridge replacement and adding an easy pass lane through this corridor. The entire project is expected to last through 2026. Sticking around for a while. All right, Megan, thank you. An update right now on some breaking news that we've been following for the past two hours. The fire officials are calling an apartment in West St. Paul unlivable after a large fire overnight. Eva Anderson has been on scene all morning. Eva, what's the latest? Good morning, Jason. Yeah, as you said, it is unlivable. We're going to give you a different angle than we've been showing you all morning now that all fire crews have gone away, and that was in the past five minutes. So take a look at this. It is a two unit apartment complex. Deputy Fire Chief Mark Erickson tells us that thankfully by the time they arrived, which was at 308 AM, all people inside were evacuated. So that's the good news. None of them are hurt. However, it is unlivable. However, the good news is right next door, there's a business, it's a locksmith business. They say that there is no apparent damage there right now. But let's take a look at what the flames looked like earlier. Fire crews were called just after 3 a.m. They arrived within five minutes and there were flames shooting up. It took them about 10 minutes to get the bulk of the fire out and then to clear all remaining smoke. It took about an hour and thankfully everybody is safe and is just currently working on finding housing. They said um, again, the people who live there were gone by the time they arrived. They were able to quickly put it out. It is still under investigation. We'll, we'll be sure to update you as soon as we find out the cause guys. All right, Eva, thank you. Well, Minnesota DFL leaders have been under pressure to take action after a chaotic scene at the Minneapolis DFL's 10th Ward Convention. And right before midnight, they did just that. Yeah, they banned Nasri Warsami from ever seeking the party's endorsement, claiming that he escalated the fighting when his challenger took the stage. CC is live in Minneapolis with more on how this unfolded. CC. Hey, good morning. So the meeting that was held to uh, make this decision, it lasted for hours, but in the end, the ban was approved. Now, uh, this ban is coming after a pair of bylaws were changed. So if you take a look, here's that chaotic video uh, that kind of sparked all this. You can see pushing, screaming, fighting. The new rules that are now in effect allow the DFL party to ban people who engage in violence from future DFL party events and they allow the DFL party to ban candidates and campaigns from seeking the DFL party's endorsement if they engage in or incite violence. So under these new rules, the DFL party can officially ban Warsami from seeking the DFL party's endorsement. We want people to know that when they enter into these halls where we're making these decisions, that they'll be safe, they'll be protected, and they'll be able to support whichever candidate they choose. Now, this decision could also potentially ban Warsami and members of his campaign from the DFL altogether. Now, in the past, Warsami says he didn't um, incite this violence, 
We did reach out to him just a few hours ago to get a new response from him this morning after this news came out. We're still waiting for a response, though. Jason, Alicia. All right, CC Games reporting live. Thanks for that update. Well, this morning we have learned the name of a 14-year-old boy who was shot and killed late Monday in Minneapolis. The medical examiner says Alan Davis died after being shot several times near 38th and Bryant. Right now, police are still looking for whoever shot the teen. The two teens charged in last week's chaos in and outside Washburn High School will stay in juvenile detention until their trial. A judge made the decision yesterday. One of them, a 17-year-old from St. Cloud, is accused of stabbing another teen in the back in the school auditorium. The second, a 16-year-old from Minneapolis, is believed to have fired three shots outside when police arrived. Well, new rules are in effect for police officers in our states. One of the biggest changes, the board that oversees officers can revoke peace officer licenses if someone violates any guidelines, even if they aren't charged with or convicted of a crime. The board says there is potential to revoke licenses faster than before, but the process still has to go through an administrative hearing. The rule was influenced by George Floyd's murder at the hands of Minneapolis police. Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association is opposing the change. 6.07 on the clock and it's official starting on August 1st. Recreational marijuana will be legal for anyone 21 and older here in Minnesota. This morning, John Croman lays out the details of the new law and what lawmakers are still trying to decide. With a few strokes of a few pins, Governor Walls made Minnesota the 23rd state in the nation to legalize recreational marijuana. Right behind him, former Governor Jesse Ventura, who started talking about this 20 years ago. Starting August 1st, Minnesotans can carry up to two ounces of cannabis, keep up to two pounds at home, and grow up to eight plants. Also starting in August, expungement of past low-level crimes. Retail sales still about a year off because the state has to get a licensing agency up and running. 607 is your time. Turning now to a live look from Washington, D.C., where in just a few hours, the House will debate and vote on the debt ceiling bill. If it passes, the move will then it will then move rather to the Senate. The bill, which is the result of a deal between House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Biden, cleared the House Rules Committee yesterday. The deal suspends the nation's borrowing limit until early 2025, holds non-defense spending flat next year with a 1% increase in 2025, and it also expands work requirements for federal food stamp recipients. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle still aren't sure on how they're going to vote, including Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar. I have not decided yet again, waiting for the numbers and how it will positively or negatively impact my constituents before I vote. Yeah, we're gonna go to the two. Treasury Department says if the debt ceiling isn't raised by June 5th, the national debt will no longer be able, or the nation rather, will no longer be able to pay all of its financial obligations. Well, the race for the White House is heating up on the Republican side as two more people are showing their interest in running. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has the details on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' first official campaign event in Des Moines. We are tracking the latest developments in the race for the White House in 2024. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis making his first in-person appearance here in Iowa since formally announcing his candidacy, escalating his attacks against former President Trump as he tries to court evangelical voters here. A new poll showing that a majority of Republicans across the country think that former President Trump is probably their best option to beat President Biden. But DeSantis trying to counter that narrative. I'm Dave Gutierrez in Iowa, and we'll have the very latest on this developing story coming up on today. Let's take a live look from downtown Minneapolis here at 609, where the sun is already up. It's going to be a pretty hot day across the metro, though, and later we're going to see some storms. So let's get right out to Guy to walk us through what's happening today. Yeah, you know, we'll have temperatures today and then the remainder of the week in the upper 80s and low 90s, and that will give way to some showers and thunderstorms to develop later on this afternoon and evening, especially in the western part of the state. Better shot for folks watching uh, in the western and northwestern section of Minnesota. As things track eastward, we'll see those storms kind of fall apart, uh, some making their way into the metro. So uh, not as stormy as what it's going to be like come Friday, for example. Friday looks like our stormiest day. 90 yesterday, our average low 55. We were at 63 yesterday morning. 74 is our average high temperature. So you can see we are running well above that. Nowhere close to the record today of 98, but tomorrow will be pretty close to some records tomorrow through Saturday. 
we could tie some records or break some record temperatures. That's how warm it's going to go. Right now, temperatures are in the mid 60s. Southeast wind at just six miles per hour. Radar pretty much quiet. You have some isolated pop up showers and storms uh, as you get towards the I 90 corridor, but you can see those actually getting ready to fizzle. The rest of us pretty much dry uh, for right now. Let's get into your uh, weather today. Western Minnesota, northern Minnesota, that's when we'll have that better chance at finding showers and storms. Uh, and then you'll see temperatures climbing to the 90s uh, for today. Also tomorrow, upper 80s for Friday. And uh, you'll see temperatures still pretty mild too, getting into uh, the weekend with upper 80s. And then next week, cold front cools us down.